Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Bienvenue and welcome to 2016 and the 10th season of Hello Bonjour Alberta. I'm Marc Lalonde. And I'm Anne Boiteau. And did you know that there's an organization that looks after providing us with reliable electricity 24-7 here in Alberta? It's true. It's called AESO. ISO. 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 A-E-S-O. Pronounce it however you like. We're very <laughs> pleased to have Miranda Keating Erickson with us, Vice President of Operations, and we're going to learn all about it. Welcome, Miranda. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. Let's start with you. Okay. Um, what's your background? Where are you originally from, if it's not Alberta, uh, even if it is Alberta, and uh, how did you uh, get into this kind of, this line of business and, and get to Alberta? I was born and raised just outside of Montreal, on the south shore of Montreal, in a little town called saint bruno de montarville uh, and uh, lived there until uh, there and in and around Montreal until I was done at McGill University. Um, I have a, a management degree from McGill University, and then spent a little bit of time, as I describe it, gallivanting around the world uh, as a young person, and then ended up here in Calgary. And I started in the electricity industry um, sort of by accident. I desperately needed a job when I landed here, and it was the first job I got was my doorway into the electricity industry. Uh, and 20 years later, here I am. Oh, well, just <laughs> climb that ladder. <laughs> uh, essentially, because I started out as an administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really? did. Really? Well, that, that's quite the story. So, you know, there is opportunity Absolutely for advancement there in is. Alberta. And a very interesting industry, for especially sure. nowadays. It is. It's a fascinating industry. And I never knew that until I was in the middle of it. <clears> and then I realized how interesting it really is. Tell us about uh, your family and, uh, and the things that are going on there. Well, I'm uh, married to a wonderful man and I have a second full-time job as a hockey mom. Um, so I have two boys, they are aged 9 and 13, uh, who are both uh, very active in terms of sports and activities, so they both play hockey. Uh, my oldest is also a basketball player and mm -hmm. I have the joy of being his head coach because oh. um, I played basketball when I was young, so that's a lot of fun. Um, and so that keeps me busy when I'm not at work. Uh, and you mentioned to us that your children were in immersion. They are. And uh, your older son is soon to be going on a quite extended immersion mm -hmm. so we, experience. Um, so my younger son, Declan, is in grade four. Um, he goes to Westgate School. Uh, and my older son is in grade eight at Bishop Pinkham and has, uh, Aiden's re recently been given the opportunity through an organization called OSEF, and I can't remember what OSEF stands for, um, but it's an exchange program uh, run between France and Belgium and Canada, run Canada-wide, that gives students the opportunity for a full immersion exchange for 11 weeks. So next year, when Aiden's in grade nine, we will receive a boy from France, we don't know who yet, for uh, 11 weeks at our home and then a few months later Aiden will go and live with them uh, in France or Belgium in their home and go to school there for three months. Exciting. It's exciting. very exciting. Very exciting and, and a real immersion opportunity. Mm. Be great. So will he have the opportunity to continue his sport while he's over there? Is we that hope so. Work? We don't know. We don't know. Um, that we I do know that with the students that were here from France this year, they were here in the right time frame that one of the boys was able to play on the school soccer team. He was a soccer player in France, mm -hmm. and the timing fit. 
So it will depend a bit on what the, the sports schedule is, wherever that he goes and out. what season it is and if it's a sport he plays. So I guess we'll find out. Okay, well, let's talk about electricity a bit. Yes. Sure. Okay. Exciting stuff. That's right. So the organization that, uh, that you work for, how big is it and, and what exactly does it do? Sure, so the ISO, so it stands for the Alberta Electric System Operator. Um, ISO is much faster to say, so I'll, I'll just say ISO. Sure. We, uh, we're just over 400 employees, and we, mm. it's our job on behalf, um, sort of at arm's length of the government of Alberta, but on behalf of the people of Alberta, to, uh, to manage and coordinate uh, our, whole, our wholesale electricity system to ensure that we have a reliable system um, each and every day. So, so, so is it a crown corporation? It's not, uh, not technically. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a corporation oh. created by law um, that is independent. And so we have an independent board of directors. Uh, the board of directors is appointed by the Minister of Energy, but then under our board of directors, oh. we operate as a corporation, but as a not-for-profit corporation. So our costs are covered through electricity rates. Um, and then we make decisions on, in terms of the electricity system on behalf of Albertans. Great, so you're not on the, uh, on the stock exchange. You don't no. have to worry about quarterly reports. We you do can have to produce quarterly reports, right. but not <laughs> earnings reports. Yeah. And uh, so you're planning on a very long-term basis, aren't you? We are. It, uh, actually, the law tells us we have to plan on a 20-year basis. Oh, okay. um, and so we are looking out, not just at next year and the year after, but um, large infrastructure takes a long time to build, uh, and you want to get it right. And so it's and our job to look far out. What's, it, what's the rate of growth here in Alberta? How do you start evaluating this? Yeah, that's a really good question. So we, uh, the historic <coughs> rate of growth in Alberta for the last 10, 20 years has been huge. It's been, yes. you know, two and a half, three percent a year, which, you know, when that compounds year over year over year, that's a lot of growth in this, in this province. Um, the size of our electricity system in terms of the total production has doubled in the time I've been in the industry. So, wow. I mean, that's, that's a lot of growth. Uh, when we're looking forward at the future, we look at um, multiple forecasts from different economic organizations, the Conference Board of Canada, the okay. um, different, different uh, private companies that do economic forecasts, those kinds of things, to get a general idea of economic, expected economic growth and population growth and those kinds of things, because electricity growth tends to follow on the same path yes. as economic growth does and as population growth does. So you have to cover off the, the best, uh, the, the highest and the lowest scenarios. We do do scenario Instead, planning, okay. absolutely. And all of that um, sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So um, with your management background, all that number crunching must, uh, must come somewhat naturally. Uh, yes and no. I'm, uh, there are a lot of people that work for us that are a lot smarter yeah, than I am. Well, model <laughs> builders and simulators uh, and Yeah, whatnot, and actually yes. as VP of Operations, the, uh, that whole sort of forecasting and planning function isn't my area of responsibility, so it, it's very interesting to me, but it's not where I spend my days. Um, You're more so with the controller. Day to day, right. right. Yeah. So okay. the actual operation of the electricity system, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. And that's a lot. Like air traffic controllers. I mean, there's... It is. It's 24-7 it people managing the flows, isn't it? Yeah, and one of the things that uh, not a lot of people think about in terms of electricity is um, your production of electricity must always exactly match your consumption of electricity in every minute. Um, it's, you don't yeah. store it. It's not like most things where you manufacture and you send something mm. to a warehouse mm -hmm. and you wait till you need it. In electricity, it's moment to moment um, what's being consumed and what's being produced must balance. And that's part of our job is to, to move the production of the different generators in the province, and we do all this based on price. So they tell us what price they're willing to sell at, and we move their production, direct them to move their production up and down so that consumption wow. is always exactly balanced off in the province. And do we have backups? In Absolutely. Case it doesn't. <laughs> Absolutely. We have backups for everything. Um, so we have, so if a, a generator that is producing something goes wrong and can no longer produce, we have other generators that step in and, you know, and we make up. sure that balance is always there. Um, if a transmission line fails, we have, we've done uh, analysis in advance. We always know if this thing fails, this is what's going to happen. So we're always prepared so that we can make sure the supply of electricity stays reliable because, um, 
you know, whether it's because of freezing rain or a, mm -hmm. a bird makes contact with a transmission yeah. line or a tractor does or, you know, things happen and, and yeah. things go out of service. Um, and then we also have for our building where our system control center is, we have full uh, a generator backup, um, computer backups, uh, you know, making sure that we can still function. And then we have a full backup center as well if anything were to happen with that one. So we take the, the reliable supply of electricity very, very, very seriously. Well, it, it is a critical service, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, people can't survive without electricity <coughs> in this People start day and age. to actually die no, um, no. in hospitals and whatnot if there isn't electricity. Yeah. And actually the demand is always increasing nowadays with uh, following the climate uh, change conference in Europe, um, did that, is that going to impact your organization? There's, so th there's no question. We, uh, the, the government of Alberta has recently received a report from a, a panel of experts with recommendations as to what they should do around climate change and they've said that there's some of those things that they're going to implement and it really creates a period of of large transition over the next 10 to 15 years for our entire electricity system, where we because move away we're from coal. Fed, yeah, exactly, with coal. So, how much yeah. is coal now? Um, so, roughly. About 40% of the production capacity is coal, um, but the coal plants tend to be what we refer to as base load. They run all the time, sort of steady eddy. Uh, and so about 60 odd percent of our energy that we consume tends to come from coal. Okay. So, and so that's a big transition mm -hmm. yes. to move away from that. Yes, and you're planning on maybe some renewable energy as well as some more stable form of energy. Yeah, so that's right? the direction that, that government has indicated. So there's a lot still to be figured out. It's very early days. Uh, that uh, they would like to see at least um, a third of that coal replaced by renewable energy. Um, in Alberta, so we have a, the, the role of planning the electricity transmission system, which is the, the transportation of electricity, but we count on private companies to build the production facilities. Okay. And they decide what they're going to build and when and where and all of those kinds of things. Um, renewable can mean lots of things. It can mean wind. It can mean solar, it can mean hydro, it can mean geothermal, and they all have different characteristics. And so depending on what mix we get, um, we sort of have to figure out how we manage with all of that. Ah, okay. So big discussions coming up with the energy Absolutely, and we have and a big job to do. Yes. You know, we know that we will have, as the ISO, given our role in terms of, of ensuring a reliable electricity system in the province, we have a very big role to play in how do we incent those renewables, how do we phase the coal out, and how do we make this transition in a reliable way. Yes. That must be quite complex because you're not actually building this stuff yourself. No. No, so no you in fact, we don't own anything ourselves <laughs> except a building and some desks and computers. Right, to, um, to, to do the controlling yeah, of things. We have so a lot of really smart it. people, but we don't physically own mm. the transmission lines or the power plants or, or any of that. We really just, we coordinate it all. Thank you so much for joining us, Miranda. No problem. Uh, Miranda Keating Erickson, Vice President of Operations of ESO, and here with us. Uh, Thank you for watching and stay with us. On continue en français.